I, I always want to give a little power talk to talk about our theme. So I'm going to start with our theme of the year, which is celebration, but our, our what's the word, I, what is it, our, what's that word, the, not, the, not the theme, but the slogan. Did somebody say slogan? Or did I just hear it in my head? It's the slogan. So our slogan is, oh, <laughs> I told Thor, oh, I'll do my own today. Our slogan is the real me. And what I said was the real me in 23. And ever since that came to me <laughs> in 22, um, <laughs> thank you, uh, it's been really an interesting call out to me. Who is the real you? Are you living the real you? Is this really what you want to be doing, where you want to be doing it, how you want to be doing it? You know, what is the real me? And I've already said the real me in 23, and as you know, I'm already shedding a lot of stuff <laughs> out of my life that is really not the real me, and it is 23. So, as I said, Laura Wagner sent me a, a, a thing about this guy. So his name is Todd Perlmutter. Does anybody know him? He was an ad, a very successful high-end ad executive in New York City who sold everything, millions of dollars, just sold everything, and went traveling the world to find spirituality, to follow different types of, of religions and spiritualities. He mostly spent time uh, with the Buddhists. And he's come back, and he's now creating this new spirituality. And it's interesting, because Eric Bork and I were talking about this yesterday. In Buddhism, it's very much you know, being detached you know, and, and the idea of suf suffering. And this gentleman is saying, yeah, all of that's good, but once you understand it all, now how do we use it? How do we live it? And that's what I'm interested in. Science of mind, you know what? So what? It's nothing if it doesn't have an accessibility to me that I use it. So here it is. Happiness isn't about your job, bank account, house, or spouse. It's about how happy you are when you take all those things away and are left to sit with yourself and your thoughts. And I read that, and I got to tell you, tears came to my eyes. I was like, I have grown up in this world of wanting to be successful, wanting to make a lot of money, wanting to have a beautiful house. And I am successful, and I do have a very healthy financial attitude and lifestyle, and I have a gorgeous house and a beautiful husband. I have all the things I said I wanted, and yet when I put it all aside and sit down, am I happy? And the answer is yes for me. But could I be happier? Yes, I could. Because there are certain aspects of it, the rat race aspect of it, the trying to make things happen aspect of it. Last night, Kevin opened his uh, new show. He has a brand new musical that he is executive producer of. And um, it opened last night in La Mirada. And I sat there, and all the people from the showbiz world, in fact, one of the big critics was sitting right next to me. Um, and he complimented me on a production I did like 15 years ago. He said, I still remember you in that. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I do too. What happened to him, <laughs> that guy? And I had a lot going on in my mind last night. And I thought to myself, I don't want any of it back. But what do I want now? That really was the big point. So I asked myself these questions. Who, what, when, where, and why? And the first question was this. Who is the real me? And these are the questions I'd like you to ask yourself this year. Who is the real you? Yeah, I, I was an actor, a uh, um, singer, a dancer, writer, you know, a uh, producer, director, all these things. Husband, I was, I was just about to say wife. <laughs> Husband, wife, mother. Um, <laughs> I've been all of these things. Uh, father, I mean, a lot of that. A musician, you know, friend, um, all of these things. But is that the real me or is that just my use of the real me? And I can only answer these questions if I'm willing to get quiet, if I'm willing to slow down and really get quiet and push everything else aside and go, who is the real me? And then what are my true desires? Until I get quiet, I don't really know. I think they're what they used to be. And I can keep trying to make my life happen the way I've always expected it to happen. Someone asked me last night, they said, 
how would you feel about doing a new show? I have a show that like you're perfect for. And now the old me would be like, yeah, send me the script. I'd love to do it. But the new me, the me, the real me is like, oh, I don't even know if I have time for something like that. I, but I did say send it to me. So <laughs> the old me's still hanging in there. <laughs> But the real question is, what are my true desires? Like Steve just said up here, what's choosing me and what causes me to say yes or no? Those are the questions that I want us to get to, the real deep questions. And so when? When am I my most authentic self? Now here's the thing that I've decided about this. The answer is always. I am always my most authentic self in that moment, in that situation. Kind of like Ernest Holmes' quote that we all love, the absolute is the relative, at the level of the relative. Well, the authentic is the inauthentic, at the level of the inauthentic. If I'm being inauthentic, I'm actually being authentic to wanting to be inauthentic in that moment. It's like when Ernest Holmes says, you know, this, this, this philosophy works. Even if you don't believe it works, it works by you not believing it doesn't work and not happening what you want to happen. That was so convoluted the way I said that. <laughs> but did you all get it? Sure. Great, moving on. So, who, what, when, where do I honestly find happiness? And when I saw this picture, all I could think of was Nora. And I thought, you know, and Kevin and I were in a, were in a grocery store yesterday, and there was a woman pushing a cart, and there was a little girl in the cart, blonde hair, blue eyes, and she had these bizarre yellow glasses on, and Nora had a pair just like them and she constantly wore them. And I heard from behind me Kevin going, aww, and I knew exactly what he was thinking, and I turned around and I just looked at him and he had this little tear. And I thought, when do, where do I honestly find happiness? And the answer is, when I am in a loving state. When I am in love, and not like in love with Steve, which I am, you know, not in love with people, but when I am in that state of love, I'm my happiest. I can be doing anything and I'm happy. But if I'm in a state of you know, anxiety or stress, and most of that comes from me wanting to be someone else or do something else or feeling like I have to do something as opposed to just be something. So these questions are all for you. Where do you honestly find happiness? And then the last one, which is the first question of the five questions, which I'm finally finishing, why am I here? So if you do the who, what, where, when, and why, and just get quiet and ask yourself those questions, I guarantee you, you are going to find what you're really all about. Because it's very possible that what you're really all about isn't what you're doing. It's who you're being while you're doing it. And the last quote is, this is from Todd Perlmutter. If we have everything but peace, we have nothing. If we have nothing but peace, we have everything. So I'd like to know that this year, as we celebrate who we are, we get really quiet and really peaceful, and we start asking those questions from a deeper place and let those questions start answering themselves, or as Steve brought me to realize, Start really understanding, what has the universe chosen for you? Where, what has the universe said, this is yours, Robbie. This is who you are. And then I get to say yes 